can turn to our next speaker, Artem. I uh, introduce him shortly. So Artem is a deep, deep learning researcher, and uh, uh, he graduated from the Autonomous University of Barcelona with a master's degree in engineering. And uh, he did a lot of, not uh, uh, cultural heritage related project, if I see in his biography, uh, one of the last uh, works was uh, traffic counting using computer vision. Computer vision is, is his special field, but beside, of, on, beside uh, of that, he is very interested in arts. And uh, he found a solution in this project that he is going to speak about how to combine these kind of in, uh, uh, interests to so machine learning and arts. And it led to a very exciting project, and uh, he will speak about uh, now. So please, Artem, share your experience with us. That the floor is yours. Uh, <clears throat> First of all, thank you for the invitation, and I'm really good. I'm really glad to, to be here. Come on, these masks. Uh, I'm really glad to be here, and I would like to uh, share some experience about uh, our project in Barcelona Supercomputer Center. As uh, my colleagues say, that it's a project about the computer vision and about um, art in general. So that's why I'm just to uh, to mention that it's not about archives; it's about Glam Institution in general. And I would like to share our experience with you. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, so, St. George on a Bike uh, project, What's, what is it about? Uh, basically, the main idea of the project is uh, enrichment of metadata uh, in any case. So, we, we work with data aggregators, we work with archives, we work with uh, galleries, museums, uh, but main focus of the enrichment is uh, computer vision. Uh, the idea of the project is to uh, enrich the metadata based on the images. So if you have any kind of images, especially paintings or prints or any kind of uh, cultural heritage objects, we would like to enrich the metadata based on the computer vision and mix of computer vision and uh, different, different machine learning um, approaches. What was the motivation of the project? Um, uh, the idea, the motivation of the project was um, based on the several topics. First of all, um, uh, the automatic metadata annotation. Uh, there are several big data aggregators in cultural heritage domain right now in Europe, such as Europeana, uh, maybe WikiArt, Wikimedia, but all of them, uh, they have um, the process of um, injection of the data normally based on the data providers. And they don't provide the services of enrichment of metadata based on the original data which they have already. And the idea of the project is to enrich this metadata based on the data which we already have. The second uh, point of motivation was uh, to create the new forms of interaction between users and GLAM institutions. It can be based on the applications, uh, 3D technology, VR, AR, and all of this stuff. But at the same time, we have to understand that for all of the technologies, we have to, to be able to generate the data based on the natural language, based on the tags, or different forms of the, of the data. Uh, at, the same at the same time, the idea of the project was um, to help the uh, minorities uh, to be able to interact with GLAM institutions, with GLAM sites. Uh, as example of uh, such as visual impaired citizens. So basically, it can help uh, them to, to be able to interact with museums if we would be able to generate the metadata based on the images in an automatic way. And for sure, they improve in the search engines. It can be useful for websites, for applications, or in general in, in GLAM institutions. This was the idea of the project, and we started to work on it. Um, I would like to describe the pipeline in general, what we did for now. Uh, but I will not uh, pay too much attention to the technical details. If you would like to know, I can, I can explain it later uh, during the, the, the question and answer sessions. So the main, uh, the main point uh, of the pipeline is object detection. 
So uh, it's a computer vision approach based on the deep, deep learning. We would like to detect the images. Uh, we would like to detect the objects on the images just to be able to understand what's going on. Uh, maybe you know or not, there are several uh, levels of Panofsky of understanding of iconographical meaning of the images of paintings. And here we are at the lowest level. So we don't uh, want to know if like uh, there is Virgin Mary on the painting or uh, Jesus on the painting, we would like to understand is it like person, is it plant or something like that. Um, the second two uh, points of the, uh, of the pipeline is visual relationships and NLP for description generation. So here we use the mix of uh, computer vision and um, NLP techniques to be able to generate the, the, the description of the painting based on the natural languages. At the same time, visual relationship uh, point is able to generate the triplets between two pairs of the objects. For example, if we detected a um, person and, and the cross, uh, the visual relationships uh, point can be able to generate that the person on a cross or the person uh, crucified on the cross. So the, the triplets between two pairs of the objects. If there are several pairs, uh, the visual relationship uh, point can be able to generate the, the triplets for all of them. Um, let's... Uh, yeah, there are two more points, but they are not so important. I just would like to, yeah, I have time. I would like to notice about it. Um, we improved uh, the precision of the state-of-the-art uh, object detection model. Uh, we used the, the, the faster RCNN um, in case of um, time contacts. So we were able to explain to the neural network that if we send the, the paintings of 12th century to the uh, state-of-the-art model without retraining, without uh, changing the model, uh, if you send the, the paintings of like 18th century or 15th century, the model will be able to understand that uh, it's impossible to detect the helicopter, the cell phone, the TV remote, because they, they didn't exist in that time. And the description classifier at this point was uh, especially designed for the Europeana uh, data portal because uh, we tried to collect the, um, the, da the data set, uh, the collection of uh, captions of the images, but we weren't able to, to distinguish the, the descriptions between, to distinguish the descriptions of the painting. Uh, and descriptions of the, for example, the author, the, the style of the painting, the techniques, uh, the, the place where it was uh, found in and all of this stuff. So the caption classifier is uh, just um, the tool which can extract the, the, the descriptive uh, sentences from the general description of, I don't know, of any caption. Um, let's focus a bit on the object detection. Um, why it's important and why it's complicated. First of all, we tried, of course, we tried the state-of-the-art object detection models to be able to, to, to detect the objects, but we figure out that it's almost impossible. First of all, we have to understand that images, especially paintings, they have their own style. Uh, they have um, imaginary beings. Uh, they have uh, symbols. And um, this is why it's impossible to use state-of-the-art models for glam institutions, especially for the museums. Because uh, the, precision of, uh, the precision of uh, this model drops a lot, and basically it's around like 10% more or less. Uh, at the same time, we figure out that there is no data sets for object detection, especially for cultural heritage domain. And it's, imp I mean, there are some of them, of course, uh, but first of all, uh, they are not focused on the object detection, and second, they are not uh, structured. So we can, for example, extract the data from Europeana, but we cannot use them for, for the caption, uh, for, for object detection. That's, we, that's why we decided to, to collect our own data, just to be able to train the object detection model. Here you can see the data set, the data sources, which we used for creation of data set. Uh, I mean, we try to use all of uh, available data, but we understand that it's not enough. 
uh, what do we have right now? So right now our object detection model can uh, detect uh, 69 classes. We already have uh, 15 uh, K images and they are labeled manually. Um, they are in the Pascal work format uh, and uh, the, the model of architecture which we used for object detection. But basically, I mean, if you have data set, we can try any kind of architecture of the neural networks. Um, here you can see the list of classes which uh, our model can detect right now. Uh, as you can see, there are like general classes such as a person, uh, book, uh, some, some, some animals, but at the same time we would like to detect more specific classes, more classes related to the cultural heritage domain. That's why we added uh, some, some classes uh, which related to the occupation, such as a bishop, uh, monk, uh, knight, shepherd. Uh, we added some classes related to the uh, iconic mean, iconographic meaning, such as crucifixion, uh, judice. And a part of it, we added uh, some classes which related to supernatural being, such as uh, angel, minotauros, and tauro, and all of this stuff. Uh, here you, you can see the example of object detection model. On the left side, uh, um, the results of the um, model, the set of the art model. And the, on the right side, you can see the results of our model. So as you can see, the angel was detected uh, correctly. Uh, I'm not sure that it's, no, you can see. Okay. So here are examples of, uh, uh, of object detection, the object detection model. I'm, I'm really sorry that you cannot see it properly, but uh, there are some uh, objects detected on the images, such as uh, boats, banners, uh, crucifixion, crown of thorns, and all of uh, this stuff. I'm, I'm pretty sure that you will receive the, the, the digital version of my presentation, right? after the, the workshop and you can, you can check it later. Um, so basically, uh, the next step of the pipeline uh, is to use the detected objects uh, for refining them or for un understanding uh, more general contexts. For, uh, for this task, we, we decided to use the language model and some approaches of natural language processing. Um, the idea was uh, to, uh, to use the model uh, to predict uh, the relationships between uh, pairs of the objects or triplets of the objects uh, based on the general uh, understanding of, uh, of language model. So for example, if we have the knight, uh, some mask and a horse, the, the, um, the language model uh, can generate knight is on the horse or knight holds a sword. Uh, after that, we can assume that, okay, what kind of relationships between, two, between these two triplets? So if the knight is on a horse and the knight, is, uh, the knight holds uh, a sword, we can assume that uh, it can be, I don't know, the, the image of the, of the, of the knight uh, in a battle, for example. Um, I'm pretty sure that you have the question uh, that it would be easier to use the, uh, the caption generation model just to be able to generate the caption and don't take into account these like uh, several, several steps uh, pipelines. But what we figure out that um, there is no data for caption generation. Even in data aggregators such as European or WikiArt, the captions are not related to the scene they are not depicted to the scene of the image. They are depicted to the, the life of the author. They, they are de depicted to the medium, style, and uh, different aspects of the, of the painting, but not, uh, uh, not the scene of the painting. So that's why we had to, to start this from the low level uh, to be able to generate some kind of like easy triplets or for, of, uh, for, for understanding of the, of the, of the painting. Um, 
So here's some, some, some technical information about how, how we used uh, the language model for, for refining uh, the classes. We used the transformal based language model. The model attempts to predict the original value of musket word, the prediction based on the semantic contexts, and normally if we use the, the, the pre-trained uh, language model, the semantic context is pretty, pretty nice. But at the same time, we understood that uh, to be able to increase the precision uh, of such, uh, such, such type of prediction, we would like to train our own language uh, model based on the cultural heritage domain. And it can be like the next step of the project in the future. Um, another point, as I told you before, is, uh, um, is detection of visual relationships. But we didn't use, uh, in, that po in, in, that, in that step of the pipeline, we didn't use any uh, additional information from additional sources, such as language model or uh, any type of the model. We decided to, to try the, um, to analyze the bounding boxes of two uh, of the pairs of the objects detected by the object detection model. So, for example, like uh, as I told before, it's pretty easy if we have the person and if they have the cross, we can assume that it's crucifixion. If we have the child and we have a woman, we can assume that it's Virgin Mary. I mean, I'm, super, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that it's not a um, highly precise approach because uh, the, the, the scenes of the paintings can be completely different from time to time. But uh, based on several, uh, several <coughs> parameters of analysis of bounding boxes, we can generate the rules for, uh, for detection some sim simple triplets, such as uh, two objects and visual relationships between them. Um, right now we are in, in, in the process of evaluation of this approach uh, and uh, generation more rules uh, between pairs of the objects and I guess we will be able to present the results pretty soon. But at the, at, at the moment we can assume that it's pretty, um, pretty precise approach without, without knowing um, additional information about the image, we can generate the visual relationships between objects. And this, 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 this step can be used as uh, a middle step for generation of caption, which uh, we can use for uh, data collection again and training then, for example, the deep learning based uh, caption generation model. Uh, yeah, this is example of rule-based visual relationships. So how, how it works, we have the person, we have the crown, we have the person and hollow. Then we calculate some parameters and we can assume that uh, the, the person with a crown is a king or queen, uh, the person with a hollow is a saint, uh, if the, the, the person holding a child, it's Virgin Mary and all this stuff. Uh, the most interesting part for me, challenges. Um, we, and during the project, I mean, uh, we're already working on this for a um, year and a half, almost two years, uh, but we, we figure out the, the main problem uh, for any type of these projects is data collection. I mean, basically, yes, we have like uh, access to the data and the data can be really nice, but uh, at the same time, we figure out that, for example, not, uh, all of them, not all of uh, GLAM institutions publish their data on the Creative Commons license. Basically, that's why we, can not, we cannot use this data in the future. I mean, yes, we can collect it, yes, we can train the model, but we cannot publish it in the future. And if someone would like to represent our results, it's impossible. At the same time, the um, we have to understand that the data in cultural heritage domain is unique. That's why it should be accessible. That's why it should be published. Because if we are talking about like, I don't know, the medical domain, we can generate the data. We can like uh, treat the people, we can heal the people, we can collect the data, we can publish the data, and during like several, I don't know, years we will be able to collect enough data to train the, the, the artificial intelligence models. But for GLAM institution, the data is limited. We cannot like, um, create new paintings of 18th century. We cannot create of, uh, 
um, cultural heritage objects to be able to generate new data. That's why the data should be accessible, published, and under the Creative Commons license. If we will not be able to have these data, we will not be uh, able to apply artificial intelligence in the institutions. We will be on the first stage without like, improving the technology and without applying this technology and without like, proving this technology to production. Um, the second point is uh, small data sets of the paintings and cultural heritage objects. Uh, it, 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 more, it, it related more to the, um, to the problem of uh, structured and unstructured data. So basically, like, there are data aggregators, but they don't, uh, they try to structure the data from data providers, but in their own way. So basically, if you would like to, um, uh, to apply the artificial intelligence technologies in GLAM institutions, we have to create as much as possible data set, just to be able to share them, uh, just to be able to use them, and this is the, the, the key point, this is the key step of applying the artificial uh, intelligence technologies in the GLAM institutions. Um, the, third, the third point, the third challenge is poor metadata. So basically, yes, we were able to collect like uh, 20,000 of images for uh, object detection model, but the, the metadata of the images were so poor and unstructured and heterogeneous so that's why we had like to work a lot just to be able to, to unify the data, to be able to have like image, title, and description, or image, title, and tax, just to be able to use this data in the future for, 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 for training the model, to be able to, to enrich this metadata. And uh, this is the key point. And here, uh, the challenges, uh, the next challenge is evaluation. So the problem that uh, we have lack of data and uh, I mean we are trying to, 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 uh, to build the evaluate process uh, based on the like uh, standards, but it's, uh, it's pretty difficult because we, we have to cut the data and uh, take into account the problem of limitation data, it's, it's kind of painful. Um, I have time, <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> so just, uh, just, uh, just uh, the last slide about the next steps, what we would like to, know, what we would like to do. Uh, in ex in experimental way, we would like to build a knowledge graph uh, of cultural heritage domain uh, with relationships between the main objects uh, just to be able to understand the connections, the relationships, and to, to have this knowledge graph accessible for everyone just to be able to use the to use it in the, in the future. Um, we would like to extend uh, the scope of the approaches which we used right now for enrichment of metadata and we would like to work for tag generation, for caption generation in the future and uh, basically right now we are trying to launch the crowdsourcing campaign uh, to, to be able to collect the, the, the captions for the, for the images, for the paintings. Uh, I mean, basically, the, of course, we will try to deploy uh, everything what we have right now. Uh, basically, we didn't publish uh, the code and the approaches yet because we are in the process of evaluation, and after that, we will, I will, we will publish it, of course. Um, we would like to improve the precision of the, uh, of the approaches which we have right now, and uh, as usual, we will try to collect more data. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm ready to answer the questions. No questions in the chat yet. Okay, I, I, I think the audience uh, needs some time to formulate their questions, and until I, I, I just give a comment to what uh, Artem uh, uh, told us, the lack of uh, data. Actually, I also feel, I mean, and we are collaborating in, 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 in different kind of uh, research group companies to uh, to, to provide better solutions for our users, and I many times, very frequently, find the same uh, problem, that we uh, archives, GLAM collections, have a lot of data, but we, we cannot share uh, it in a proper way, 
just in order to uh, do a research on that. Uh, with good quality, with, with uh, transparent, with, with, with uh, proper licenses. So I think if, if, we, if we want to generate more research on this or more uh, result how to, how to process our data, we have to support the uh, community of ready researchers with good quality data, at least for uh, researches. So, uh, a question from the third row. Uh, hi, th mm, I would like to thank you first for your very interesting presentation and also let us acknowledge how you just said that the importance of the training data, which seems like a given, but, but it actually is not. There's so many projects outside when people say like, well, there was not really data available for these purposes, but we use this other anyway. So we, we have to just be acknowledged with this type of cultural heritage material that we, we need to be very aware of what it is and what it is that we need to, to get to aware. So just, and, and precisely because of that, I would like to ask you a little bit about how the, the human and computing processes that went into into creating this training set of 20,000 images, like how did you, could you tell us something about how you chose the images? What kind of bias do you think they could come? Were there like one labeler, more than one? You've said that you also had to change some metadata. So um, just give us a bit of the, of, of the inner parts that is what actually ensures that the, the product that you can deliver is gonna be, is actually gonna do what, what we want it to do, uh, really. Thank you. Yeah, this is, the, this process was, was First of all, it was really interesting. Uh, secondly, it was really difficult. Um, so basically, at the, at the first stage of the project, we saw that, okay, there are like several data aggregators of uh, European, uh, European data. We can use these for, for, for any kind of like uh, deep learning approach and we would like be able to generate uh, metadata pretty soon. But when we started to work with, for example, with Europeana or WikiArt or Wikimedia, we figure out that, uh, uh, first of all, uh, the, the data and the metadata is really, is unstructured. So that's why uh, it was pretty, pretty difficult to, to, to find the proper data. Uh, the, process, the process of collection data were based on the classes, first of all. So we defined the list of the classes which we would like to, do, to detect on the object, object detection model as I told you, 60, 69 classes, and we started to collect the data uh, class by class. Um, obviously, there are plenty of data, for, for, for example, for the class person, or uh, horse, or sword, or knight. But at the same time, we figure out that there is lack of data for like specific classes, like crucifixion, uh, some kind of animals, monks, and all of this stuff. Um, at the same time, when we define the when we define the list of the classes, we define the time frame of the of the images we would like. So uh, this time frame was uh, from 12th century till 18th century. At the same time, uh, we define the geographical uh, frame of the of the data as well. So we decided to focus on on the European uh, cultural heritage. Um, it's a really interesting point, and I will come back to, to this point later, uh, just to be able to, to explain this, uh, this idea. Uh, as, and as I told you, we started to collect the data class by class. So basically, the first, uh, the main source of the data was uh, Europeana. If, it's, if uh, we didn't find enough data, we started to look at uh, another data, data source, like Wikimedia, WikiArt, then we started to collect the data from uh, open sources uh, of different museums, and uh, step by step, we collected the like, 15 thousand, thousands of images. Uh, the, the labeling process was uh, done manually by our research group, so we, we, we had two options. Um, three options. Uh, the first one is mechanical torque, just to order. Uh, the second option is crowdsourcing, and the third option is like to do by, our, by ourselves. So we decided to focus on uh, ourselves because, uh, first of all, it's the biggest data set right now in the cultural heritage, a, a part of the icon class. Um, it's the biggest uh, data set for object detection in the cultural heritage. That's why we wanted the high quality of data set. 
uh, that's why we decided to do it by ourselves. Because I uh, like the mechanical torque is really nice and fast if you need to train the model. But if you would like to share this uh, data set in the future, you have to understand the, the risks. The crowdsourcing is really a uh, nice approach. But in case of uh, if you have the, 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 the database of the users, which you would like to do. Um, for example, if we were able to publish the data set on Wikimedia or Wikimedia Commons or somewhere just to be able to, to attract the people to, to do this process, we would like to do it. But at the same time, we have to understand the risk as well because of the quality of the metadata, the quality of like, annotation process and all this stuff. Um, about the geograph geographical frame. Uh, we decided to focus on the culture, uh, uh, on the European culture heritage, but at the same time, we try to collect the data as much as possible. So the data is pretty biased in the data set. Um, there are examples of um, Japanese culture heritage. Uh, there are examples of, uh, I mean, Asian in general, uh, from Latin America, from, 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 from North America, and all this stuff. And I didn't, um, I didn't know, uh, I didn't, uh, I decided not to include uh, this topic in the, into, the, um, into the presentation, but I guess it's pretty, pretty important right now, especially in the artificial intelligence community. So basically, um, a part of like precision, uh, it, it's, 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 it's part of the evolution process. A part of the precision right now, um, uh, the artificial intelligence community try to evaluate the fairness of the model. The fairness means that uh, if the model um, have the same precision for different social uh, for, for different social groups, for example, if you would like if you, if we take the simplest model of prediction of like uh, give uh, the credit to the person, the precision should be like the same for when for the man and for the woman. The precision precision should be the same for the different ethnic groups. Um, we didn't publish these results yet, but we started uh, some evaluation uh, process of the model based on the fairness as well. And uh, it's kind of interesting, to be honest. Uh, because even if uh, we have the equal uh, representation of men and women on the paintings in, in like small sub set, the, model the, the, the precision of the model is uh, better for the men. And we are trying to understand why. Because of the shape, because of the representation, because of, I don't know, the, the, some, some black box ideas of the deep learning model. We don't know, but we are trying to evaluate it. Um, I mean, it's, it's not about like biasing of the data set. Because we try to, to collect as much as possible data. But it's, uh, it's about the evaluation, and we would like to know the fairness of the data, the fairness of the model in case of like presentation of different social groups, ethnic groups of the paintings. Did I answer? <laughs> yes, we have a question in the chat. Um, so the question is, the more description we provide for a painting, the more accurate the model is. Is that right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I assume, I assume. <laughs> the point that um, we have to understand uh, that what type of uh, generation we means like manual uh, generation, if you are like writing by ourselves, or it was generated by the model. So in that case, we are talking about different types of the, of the machine learning, like semi-supervised and supervised learning. We use both approaches. So we try to, um, to give the model to generate uh, some kind of description or object, the, the detected object, and then just to, to correct them if it's correct or not. And we figure out that it's kind of like um, make the process of annotation faster, but the precision uh, is going down. So basically, yes. I mean, taking into account the general idea of the deep learning, uh, garbage in, garbage out. So if we have like the garbage data in, into the in, as input of the deep learning model, we will receive the same at the output. 
And if you have like more data for the uh, for deep deep learning model, we will receive more precise output. And yeah, this 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 uh, this 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 is this is the rule of the artificial intelligence community. But we have to understand the limitation of the cultural heritage domain, as I told. We cannot uh, collect the data for the infinity, so we have the limited amount of the data. Okay. Another question from Christina. Thank you, Artem. At the beginning of your presentation, uh, I think in this pipeline uh, slide, you mentioned uh, this technology aims also to help people living with disabilities. Can you explain a little more uh, this aspect, please? Yes. Um, the idea, I mean, um, it's, it's, it's kind of the, it, it was the point of motivation of the project, but we didn't focus a lot uh, on it, but the idea was um, to use uh, the, the model which we generate, uh, the, to use the model which we were able to generate the caption for, uh, for such type of the minorities. For example, like, um, Generation automate, automatic uh, generation of uh, metadata on the web pages, uh, the alt uh, caption, I don't remember how to, to call it properly. Um, to generate the caption, the automatic generate caption in the museums uh, in, in the real time. So basically, basically if, we are, like, if we are going to the museum right now and we can read uh, the, uh, the caption on the pain of the paintings, what we can find there. We can find the name of the author, we can find the date, we can find uh, where the, the painting uh, were created, where like, uh, what kind of the painting this is. But there is, I mean, basically almost there is no information about the scene. And when I, for example, like it was a really funny story. <clears throat> um, when I, it was like 10 years ago, I decided, I, it, was my it was my first trip to the London and I decided to go to the National Gallery. And I had no idea about the culture, the, the European culture heritage, because I was born in a Muslim country. Um, and basically, I had no idea about like iconographical meaning of the paintings. And I was standing in front of uh, in front of the painting, and the scene was, uh, I guess, it was about adoration of Maggie or something like that. So there, the, 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 there were Virgin Mary, three kings, and uh, the Jesus. And I tried to read the, the description, and there wasn't any information about what's going on on the painting. And I, I mean, I could see the, the, ma the man, I could see the woman, I could see the child, but I have no idea what's going on. And I asked, uh, I asked the girl about like uh, description, why you, you don't write the, the scene understanding, the, the scene description, what's going on in the painting, just to be able to, to explain what's going on. And the girl sh said to me that it's kind of like traditional rule of the museums. So it's, the, the, the rule means that not to write uh, the obvious um, caption what's going on in the painting because you can see it. But at the same time, I'm a guy who was born in, in Muslim country. I have no idea what's going on and I would like to understand. So that was the idea of the project uh, for the minorities uh, where we can generate the caption depicted to the theme without like additional metadata just to be able to explain what's going on. Okay, we have time for a last question from the online audience. Thank you, but actually the question is for Kerstin. Um, do you foresee a step of the project where topics or subjects can be automatically extracted from scanned text, like documents with no available metadata? Um, th that's, that's actually an interesting question because we are currently uh, discussing a project idea that might be able to kind of combine both these sides. Um, I mean, we have kind of um, different streams of um, research projects in the archives domain at the moment. Um, one kind of dealing with digitized material and, and essentially doing what was suggested. So looking into the question, okay, can we, um, from the digitized image, extract the text that the image 
has and then kind of run certain algorithms to, to m make meaning out of that text. Um, but on the other hand, we also have this kind of vast amount of archival material that isn't digitized and probably will never be digitized. Um, and so we are currently in a conversation of can we kind of bridge, bridge this gap in, in one way with kind of the different approaches that are currently around. Uh, so it's certainly an area to, to watch out for, um, and um, I don't know, I mean, maybe Juan uh, Andreo, who is uh, on the panel uh, in the next round, can say a little bit more about what they are doing um, in their university project uh, on handwritten text recognition in this regard. Okay, thank you. So, thank you. Uh, actually, with, these, uh, with this question, we... Sorry? No, they are dead. Sorry. Okay. The coffee is as ready as the coffee are. So that everyone will come make a break. <laughs> so uh, have the coffee. That was my in, uh, intention to introduce that uh, the next uh, uh, challenge is having a coffee and taking some, some, some breath, uh, maybe outside also without mask. But uh, thank you. I think it was a strong uh, start for this two days uh, event with uh, challenges like uh, making search aid in a multilingual environment, which is actually just thinking about how to solve a problem is, is, is uh, uh, really great and how to analyze uh, uh, pictures which are act absolutely context dependent. So these are very important and in, in interesting challenges, but I give you the time for you to have and enjoy your coffee, and we will meet again here at exactly 11, 12, 11, 15, 11 15. okay? So enjoy your break.